So first thing, so here's how I made this deck. Zero damage cards, or sorry, zero mana cards are really good. They, every turn you always draw back up to five cards. So unlike Hearthstone, where you're only drawing one card per turn, um, zero, zero mana cards are really, really strong. Um, and I'm actually thinking about throwing in some Void Pokes, because why not? They're just free damage. There's no enemies on the board that's going to do a damage to a crystal, and you, you never know. Um, unfortunately, Dark Elves really, really, really are reliant on Wraiths. Um, if you don't have a Wraith in your cards, which I don't right now, then it is really hard to play a proper control style with um, with Dark Elves. And so, as a result, this deck is a lot... Oh, my face is in the way of the cards here. Well, that's not very useful, is it? Now I'm down here. Okay. Um, yeah, you really just don't have a lot of staying power on the board uh, with Dark Elves. So you got to be creative, and it's less consistent than the Council deck, because Council deck, you can just kind of build up, build up guys on the board, build up guys, and eventually it'll snowball. Uh, Dark Elves, it's just a little bit harder to keep your guys alive on the board. So, with that having been said, uh, how does this deck work? So first of all, when you're making a deck, you always, 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 always should put in Shadow Ritual. It is free mana. It's zero mana and you get one, two, or three mana for free. If you draw it, it's, it's so good. It's just free tempo. There is... Every single deck in Hero Academy 2 should be playing two of these cards. And uh, Council has one as well, um, which is the uh, the Mana Mania. This one as well. Every single Council deck should have two of these. There is no reason not to include that. It, if you draw two of those on your starting turn of the game, the game is pretty much over already because you have you know, anywhere... Well, for Dark Elves, you have a 2-6 to six mana lead on the other guy. So your development's going to be way better. Your tempo's going to be way better. And you're going to get strong units on the board faster. And Council's the same way. Um, it's just a free advantage. So that's rule number one. You should always have the Shadow Ritual. It doesn't matter what type of deck you're playing. Always have those mana increasing cards in there. There's literally no downside whatsoever. Okay. Now that I've harped on that a bit, let's talk about what else is going on here. So I think the next thing that we should talk about is the hero powers. So you get two and powers. So let's filter by power. So I only have four, um, but if I turn off the ones that only I have. So some of these are not only uh, for Dark Elf. So Ritual is one I don't have yet. Take three crystal damage, gain one. Um, I can see when it'd be useful. It's a little bit of um, it's a little bit of a win harder power if you're ahead, then it lets you win faster. Uh, maybe if there's some tempo decks where you're gonna flood the board with a lot of low um, inexpensive cards, and you're just gonna pressure him really really hard, and you are not worried about him actually attacking your crystals because he's gonna be so busy being defensive. Uh, I think that could be really good. But I don't have the cards yet to put something that advanced together, so it's not actually that useful. Um, what else do we have? Exert. Uh, deal two damage to ally here, give it plus one movement this turn. Um, I think this is terrible. Uh, because it's two mana, and it pretty much does the exact same thing as Nudge. Um, and it also does damage to your own hero. So it's hard for me to see uh, a situation where this would be a good power to have. Um, Lazy Phantom. This one would actually synergize pretty well with my deck. And if I had this, I would love to get rid of um, this Soul Well and replace it with the Lazy Phantom. I think the Soul Well is kind of garbage. In fact, I'm going to get rid of Soul Well. I think it's kind of garbage, and I'll replace it with something else. 
Um, what else? Spider Hatchling. Deal one damage to crystal, summon spider hatchling near it. Um, it's three mana, which is a lot. I also don't think this is particularly useful because it's so expensive. It also does crystal damage to you. Um, Dark Bargain. Ally Hero takes plus one, and takes two damage, or gains plus one, takes two damage. Uh, again, Dark Elves have no real way to maintain uh, board presence, so doing damage to your own units is going to make that problem even worse. Um, maybe in the future there's some way that I could reasonably take advantage of that, uh, but right now it's just not that great. And yeah, that pretty much uh, covers it for all the Dark Elf powers. So I don't really think there's a ton of good Dark Elf powers. So. Nudge is really, really great. Really, really great. Um, and Poison Hero is also really, really great. So there's not much to be uh, decided there as far as powers are concerned. So let's go back to this. So I'm just going to put a Void Poke in. Because why not? It's free. Um, and that, that building was not doing much for me in my games earlier. So I want to pause for a moment here. I need to grab a granola bar, so just give me a second here. Enough of that. So now that we've talked about hero powers, let's talk about how this deck works. So I got rid of a lot of the um, the standard cards from the Dark Elf starter deck. There's a lot of. Um, so I'm trying to think of like which ones they put in. All right, Chaos Arrows. I don't think it's particularly good. Battle Brother. I don't think is particularly good. Uh, not with Dark Elf, at least. He's really good if you have a way to keep him alive. Um, but that's tough for me. Tongue Bucket's really good. 2 6 for 4 mana. It's pretty efficient. Um, this War Sister is, I personally think, is garbage. Execute is just not that useful. Stomping other heroes is just not as important um, and instead you can get a three mana um, a three mana centurion that has the same health three and one versus two and four and actually the one armor is better because it's basically three health plus uh, one health regeneration per turn that's essentially what armor is is health regen um, and it's cheaper it's just way better So I got rid of her. This Rage Bringer is expensive. It can be good, but it's just so expensive. And this Woe Raider is the same. Like it's got a lot of HP, but you need to buff it with stuff in order for it to be useful. So um, and it's expensive at five uh, five mana to play it. So I got rid of all those guys. Um, I said I put in Order Omnius, who is super, super good. Two damage range, and on his first turn, he gives a random ally plus two damage. Great surprise card. Um, I've got Skull. Skull is my crystal assassin, so he's going to run at the other guy's crystals and uh, murder them. Uh, 
he's not really good for a control deck because he's he's got a lot of damage but he's not got a lot of health so he's pretty easy to deal with um but he's got three movements so he can especially when combined with this poke he can potentially start from four tiles away and go on um the other guy's crystal and do five damage to it and five doing five damage to a crystal you know some crystals that's enough to even just kill it in one shot but it's really um it, it's really a strong card with this deck um i don't want a lot of games with that and then really this whole deck revolves around necromancer merits um and the main kind of thrust of this deck is use poison to control the board so i've got a lot of poison minions so like the tomb crawler is, is nice and solid the void monk's a little underwhelming um and the impaler really doesn't synchronize with there doesn't synergize with this deck at all but there's just i don't have enough cards um that are units so i had to put one in there um, and then phantoms so really i'm counting on these phantoms and then haunting strength and so really what i want to do is i want to play a bunch of phantoms and just line them up in the back lines and leave them around doing nothing and then get the necromancer out and then use that haunting strength to buff up the necromancer to just some god tier unit that will annihilate everything um, and when that works it's pretty satisfying um but it's also pretty inconsistent and uh you'll probably see that as we play a few games so yeah that's enough of the deck analysis let's just uh go into some games and see what happens So we're playing another Dark Elf. Wow. That is a crazy opening draw. That's actually crazy. Normally, I would just throw these on the board. But because he's got poison, I almost want to do nothing. And then spend all my mana next turn to make a... 4 8 Necromancer Marax, which is just stupidly good. I don't think there's any reason to like discard this. So I need 9 mana for next turn. I think this is the first time I've ever completely passed a first turn. But the hand calls for it. Normally, 0 mana minions you want to play right away so you can free up more. Um, more space for next time, but uh, the situation calls for something different. So he's going to play right into my hands here. And he's just going to run his Shadow Wraith you know, across the board. He thinks it's safe. It's not safe. Alright. We play Necromancer Marax. We play two Phantoms. And then we're going to hold strength this guy. He's going to be so sad. Wow, so I could not have come up with a better way to demonstrate what this deck is supposed to do than that. That's how the deck works. <laughs> um, wow. That's crazy. So now he can just like one shot pretty much all of uh, his units. Wow, this is really unfortunate for him. So, yeah. Now his guy is dead, and I damaged his crystal. And I'm just going to put an archer in front of the necromancer for no other reason than just to be fodder. I want to keep this necromancer alive at all costs. Hey, free mana. Great, I've got three more mana. I don't really have anything that's too important to do. I'm thinking about void blasting, but I could also do it next turn. 
just to get some crystal damage. Now let's get some crystal damage. I think it's okay. No reason not to. This game's gonna end very quickly because my opening draw was just god tier. And then he played right into it. One moment here. I'm getting called. I have received a package. <laughs> okay. What happened? Um, I don't know what happened. Anyway, so he's got a one, a one guy on the board here. So we're gonna poison him. That's just gonna kill him for free. Um, these archers don't matter to me. And what I really want to do is I just want a way to put Necromancer up here and hit both crystals. So next turn he'll be dead. Um, and now I can just spend the rest of my mana however I please. Let's just put a guy in front of the Necromancer to help keep him safe in the unlikely situation that he could do something about my board. which he almost certainly can't. Time for Poof. Yeah. And the game is over. So, that's how the deck works. That was a really good explanation of how the deck works. Couldn't have gone much smoother than that. <laughs>